Good morning, everybody. Today that we're looking at um, how, how to com we're comparing and contrasting solutions for reducing the impact of catastrophic natural earth processes for humans. So, in other words, whatever we have, bad weather, such as uh, a flood, tornado. Um, this can be fires, more fires. This could be. Uh, could be a tsunami, could be um, tornado, anything like that. Any kind of natural disaster. We've all had serious events to happen near us. Serious events as in natural disasters. We've all seen it or been a part of it. Maybe a tornado. I don't know if you guys remember when tornadoes have been through or if you, we've ever had to evacuate. If you, I don't guess we have in the state of Alabama, but or where we live at anyway, but maybe you've lived somewhere before and you had to uh, evacuate. That means leave your home because of a hurricane or a earthquake or some type of natural disaster that was coming through. Lots of people in California, for example, they have to evacuate because of forest fires. There are some natural processes on earth that can be devastating, that can have devastating effects on human life. Catastrophic natural processes may not often occur, but when they do occur, they can be very devastating. Fortunately, humans are finding ways to help reduce the impact of these processes when they do occur. Now, we've got one, two, three, four different things that are happening in our world to help us prepare for natural disasters. All right, so we have awareness, and that just means um, we have weather drills at school. We can have uh, tornado drills. The media can bring, make us aware of what's going on around us. They can, uh, you know, send out special bulletins and alerts that, and this spreads the news quickly. There's just not much that we can do to prevent the natural processes from happening, but we can reduce the effects that happen whenever they do happen. Many times weather-related processes occur in the same areas over and over again. For instance, in, uh, in Tuscaloosa, over and over and over, they have tornadoes, and it just kind of wipes everything down. Um, earthquakes frequently occur in certain areas in California, too, where there are fault lines, and hurricanes are common in Florida and other places near the ocean, although this is a nuisance for residents of these areas. The frequency and increased level of predictability allow experts to plan for these events, all right? So they're able to plan for it, all right? And one of the ways that we can plan for this is awareness. One way to reduce the effects of natural disaster is through awareness. Many residents are aware of how to handle events, as, um, of how to handle these events is very useful in minimizing injury. Schools prepare students for extreme weather by conducting drills. The position in this picture is called the duck and cover. This is the duck and cover. <clears throat> we use it in schools and public places whenever events happen quickly. When we have these drills, it allows us, the students and the staff, to practice procedures for, stay, for staying safe and staying calm during weather-related events. The general public is educated through various media resources on how to handle catastrophic events should they happen. News channels will follow events and spread the word as quickly as possible to educate people on what the safest thing to do in the situation is. Next, moving on, we have meteorology. Thanks to meteorology, <coughs> people often learn about pending natural disasters well before they happen. This gives people time to prepare by seeking shelter, securing supplies, making adjustments to their homes, or temporarily traveling away from threatened areas. This preparation time significantly reduces injury and damage. Structural provisions. In areas where there are earthquakes that occur, builders use special uh, methods and construct and secure buildings. Earthquake resistant buildings are built with strong, deep foundations, strong, deep foundations with special enhancements that allow builders to better withstand Earth's movements. A thorough analysis is often done prior to building to determine if the site is safe for construction. In coastal towns where tsunamis, flooding, and this is flooding, 
kind of makes me think of most of us have been to the beach. This is kind of what we see at the beach. Houses that are and buildings that are up on stilts. A thorough analysis is done prior to the building to determine if the site is safe for construction. In coastal towns where tsunamis, flooding, hurricanes, and other tropical storms are more likely to occur. Houses are often built higher off the ground to reduce the amount of damage that can happen from flooding. And last but certainly not least, we have response, our first responders. First responders, volunteers, Red Cross. A lot of damage and injury that occurs as a result of natural processes happening after the actual events. Trees falling over, um, people needing food and water. Because of this, respond, response teams are trained in responding to needs immediately after an event has taken place, cleaning up debris from the streets, rescuing people and animals, these are our rescuers, putting out weather-related fires and restoring power are all important parts of reducing the impact of natural processes. These natural disasters allow people to step up and help each other and work together. People in other areas can come to help public officers with the aftermath and bring supplies that are needed. So, we people, we the people, can reduce the effects of natural disaster by raising awareness, studying advance, advancements in meteorology, building secure buildings, and deploying response teams.